I'm Dan. Um, so we can uh, go ahead and we'll start the recording and we'll get the meeting started. All right. Welcome everybody to another fun and exciting edition of the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. I'm your chair, Dan Middleton, and joining me is the capable Tracy Kurt to help drive the agenda here. Uh, what you saw earlier was uh, part of our uh, governance process here that we have to, to keep this a constructive community. Uh, the other thing, uh, one of the other things that we have is our uh, code of conduct, which is just one of the other tools that we have to help make sure that this is a welcoming community for everybody to participate in. Uh, if you're not already aware, we also sometimes have some chat dialogue going on the chat server, which is chat.hyperledger.org, uh, and in the TSC channel, we sometimes have some conversation going, and I've dropped the link to our code of conduct uh, in there. Uh, I think we've got a fairly full agenda today with some topics around our upcoming meetings, uh, and then uh, we've got some new business to discuss for a social impact working group, and then uh, some updates before that from some of our work in progress. Uh, so I will hand it over to uh, Tracy here to hit the next item on the scheduled agenda. Yeah, so the first thing on the agenda is uh, to talk about the meeting that we have on October 4th that we have scheduled. Uh, since we have the Hackfest uh, at the same time, we're uh, suggesting maybe we should cancel that. And so just wanted to get the TSC's view on that before we uh, went ahead and did that. So maybe, uh, do we have anybody opposed to that? All right, sounds like nobody's opposed to canceling the meeting. Um, just to be sure, uh, can we get an aye for everybody who agrees with that from the TSC? Aye. 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 All right, great, thanks. So we'll go ahead and we'll cancel the, the October 4th uh, meeting and we'll uh, definitely all be connecting at the Hackfest. Uh, speaking of the Hackfest, uh, we do have the event reminders here. So we, on October 3rd and 4th in Montreal, we have a, a Hackfest. Uh, the registration link uh, is available as well as the agenda. Uh, we do have a little bit later here to, to talk about maybe the agenda a bit more because there's still um, not a lot of information in there, not a lot of suggested topics. So um, that's something we'll want to do. We also have the uh, APAC Hackfest that will happen the week of March 4th. Uh, obviously details coming soon on that. And then, of course, the uh, schedule has been announced for the Hyperledger Global Forum that's happening December 12th through 15th in Basel, Switzerland. So with that, I guess the next uh, uh, item on the agenda is, is to talk about that Hackfest that we were going to have in Montreal. Um, so let me um, go ahead and post the link in the TSC chat if nobody else has beat me to it yet. And uh, maybe we can talk about some items that we want to add to that. Uh, I just dropped that in there, so we're good to Thanks. go. Thanks, Todd. Um, to kind of get some of the, the conversation going, I, I think some of our, our dialogue in the past, and this is captured in the, the preamble and the, the agenda there, is that we want to make as much use as possible of this face-to-face -face time for inter-project and, and inter-working group collaboration. Uh, we don't want to uh, do that uh, to the exclusion of helping to ramp new people that might be joining for the first time at that face-to-face -face gathering. Uh, but we want our, our first priority to be making headway on, on some of our work uh, and, and maybe a little bit less so on, on pitching, if you will, to to new parties. Uh, something that I didn't get around to adding to the proposed agenda topics yet that, that we have had a thread on is test nets. I know Silas during his uh, project update had, had said a good bit about what would be valuable uh, for the Burrow project and uh, I saw Mick chime in on the thread with some ideas about what uh, kind of an, an application level test net would be. So I think we could have some good dialogue there about what could be supported from the, the Hyperledger side from 
infrastructure and outreach and so forth and what would be constructive amongst the projects or just individually for each project for making use of that kind of environment. Yeah, Dan, that's also part of the um, discussion of the future of the bug bounty, right? Because this is um, test nets for testing, right? For also, it serves a security purpose as well. So um, I'll loop back with you. Maybe we can broaden that discussion also to the, the future of what we're going to do with bug bounties and, and our uh, security program. Yeah, completely. Are there any other uh, general concepts uh, around what we would be discussing face to face, uh, short of just you know the individual topics that people are welcome to throw into that on the conference agenda? I may want to lead a discussion on <clears throat> designing for containers, make things a little more portable. Um, if you use Docker and Docker as a feature of your architecture, then it really limits what you can do on Kubernetes based platforms because you end up working outside of the Kubernetes framework. And it's, uh, you know, I know Red Hat views that as a big security hole. Um, so I might, you know, want to engage in conversation with people if they're interested. I don't know if that's a separate topic or just an informal gathering. <clears throat> chat. Um, the CryptoLib team has discussed in the last couple of meetings about we're putting together an agenda for the Hackfest. So um, we're going to be covering a number of topics there. Um, and it's a, one of our key collaboration projects where we're trying to get adoption across all of the platforms. So um, we're seeking to have a sort of the broadest base of, of participants in those discussions as well. So um, maybe we can, I'll drop the link or maybe we can, Hey Hart, can you drop the link to the, our agenda? Didn't we start the agenda document? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Crypto lib is going to be a big topic there at the Hackfest as well. I thought that. Out. I don't yeah, think I go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't think we have a proper agenda uh, yet. That, that's why I laugh. Cause it's like, Oh yeah, we haven't started that yet. We, we've right. just been discussing it. Um, I think you were supposed meetings. to do that actually. Yep, that's my, yep. sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, somewhat associated with this, we're looking for interest in whether or not um, this idea of an off-ledger identity wallet that comes from how credentials and information that's signed by the ledger is exchanged off-ledger is something that has interest as a generic project outside of Hyperledger Indie um, and whether we should spin some of that project out to make some of those components more reusable between the blockchains. So we'll probably be discussing that as well at the, the Hackfest. That, that's definitely interesting, interesting. Um, to me. Another thing I'd like to throw out is, um, I know some of the um, <coughs> projects uh, have had kind of their core maintainers have uh, kind of face-to-face -face meetings uh, kind of on their own or off to the side. Um, and Hackfest may be a good opportunity for, for core maintainer groups. I know that it'd be hard to get everybody there, but if there was a critical mass there, to you know, do release planning and 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 open that up to to the the group of people who are likely to become maintainers, <laughs> or potentially could become maintainers, um, you know, just just to to get things done face to face that normally are harder to do over email or or phone. And I know it's only a couple of weeks away. Would it be difficult, uh, given the time frame, to pull like even a simple workshop on? gender diversity, um, I know from talking with my significant other, many things that I consider, you know, trying to be inclusive are actually exclusive. Um, so I didn't know if, you know, where we are in that regard, if, if we hold that off for something different, but I think some training would be good for many of us white middle-aged males, um, at least for me, um, because things I do, you know, like, hey, a bunch of us are going out for a drink after work, you want to join us, actually becomes very exclusive, I guess. So um, even though you're trying to be inclusive. So I didn't know if that would be something worth teeing up or if there's not enough time.
I think it's an important topic. I think that because it's important, it might not do well to rush getting something like that together. And since we only have uh, like less than two weeks here, um, might not be able to organize something that would be effective. We do though, I wanna uh, say, have some discussions uh, planned within the, the members meeting that, that comes ahead of this hack fest to help uh, look into some of that. Okay, well, it sounds like discussion around uh, this topic is, is pretty well covered right now. So I encourage people to get into the, the Hackfest document itself and, and get some things on the board. And we can probably move on now to uh, resuming our discussion on the community health work group. So uh, I guess Mark's last comment there was, was kind of a nice tee up for that. Where we left things at last week's call was maybe rather than pursuing a working group that we might splinter off some of this into uh, something of a task force um, on the one hand and then maybe some things that are more rote counting of commits and that kind of thing uh, that could be automated maybe that goes into a lab for for some scripts um, and then uh, we did continue this conversation over email and, and one of the the things that I think was salient there was uh, Bao Wa suggesting that, that maybe the, the governing board might be a, a good place to turn some of this discussion to, particularly where uh, I was raising suggestions of including stakeholders like uh, human resource specialists, that that might be a bit outside of the, the normal scope of, of the technical steering committee. And Dan, I wanted to also uh, bring up David Boswell's email. Um, he's unfortunately, um, speaking of, you know, community health, he's unable to join these calls just given um, his other responsibilities in life. Um, so he always listens to the recordings, but, um, you know, his his thing and, and one of what he was thinking about was, uh, you know, a task force could take problem statements from the community and, you know, really provide a, a problem statement, uh, do some research on that problem statement, and then uh, provide some recommendations for uh, the larger audience, right, the larger community, uh, or specifically to the, the community that asked for the, the specific help, right? Um, obviously, I think you know, it probably makes sense generally to, to share that amongst everybody because uh, everybody may have the same uh, problem that that exists out there in the community. So uh, I think that's kind of where he thought maybe this task force would end up going is, is maybe a, a mailing list or even on the TSC with some sort of hashtag um, where we could suggest problem statements as well as then you know, have a, a small group of people go off and, and research that problem and, and provide recommendations back to the larger community. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. I think that uh, what David brought up there is probably a well-contained scope for a first task force, looking specifically at that geographic diversity question. Um, <clears throat> regarding the idea of uh, uh, collecting metrics uh, and forks, contributors, stuff that happens to be measurable. Um, I would guardedly think that that might be a good idea. So you know, if you take the comparison between ops measurement, sometimes you don't know where a signal might exist. So you just throw everything into a, um, into a bucket and, and see what you can end up graphing. I think the danger with that is we'd have to make it clear that it doesn't beg the question that these are uh, pertinent things to be measuring because often you end up uh, over, over valuing the things that haven't been measurable. I think it'd be interesting uh, if, if people were able to do dumb automatic metric, metrics as a parallel track so that then maybe the specific task force could then 
see if there are correlations or are things that could be drawn out of otherwise fairly dumb data. I mean, if we can, uh, if we can get stuff off GitHub or if we can get stuff off mentions on chat or, you know, ingest this kind of stuff, um, at least that data would be there then. Um, to, 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 So I think I've lost a little bit of Silas's audio. I don't know if that was uh, complete for everybody else. Yeah, I think Silas uh, was saying that maybe, and I think this was something that we were thinking when we initially suggested the working group, right? Um, that he thinks a, a group of people to go off and figure out the sorts of metrics that might provide useful data, right? Um, obviously, we don't want to collect all the metrics in, in the world, but we do want to collect some metrics uh, to allow us to, you know, determine how things are going. And so, um, you know, just from the, the last meeting, right, we had suggested a lab as well, and, and that lab has been created. Um, but I, I think it is definitely a good idea for a, a small set of people or a set of people to come together and figure out what those metrics are that we should be uh, focused on, right, that, that this would actually end up leading to, to some sort of value. Yeah, I think when it comes to commit statistics, that's pretty straightforward and non-controversial. Um, when it comes to things like demographic statistics, then we're in a more sensitive ground. And that's where I think getting some, uh, getting some charter from the, the governing board and the right kind of uh, right kind of talent involved that, that understands what the rules and regulations are there is important. Um, for all this talk about statistics, can someone help me, uh, can someone give me some idea of a non-obvious statistic that you'd want to compute? Um, I so think I on know, my not, side, not Go ahead. Sorry, I, I don't know about non-obvious, but something that is interesting that isn't that I sometimes look at in a sort of manual way is looking at uh, commit on forks ahead of mass. So how many people have forked my code or some code and um, added non-trivial commits on top of it, for example? Well, and I think that you know, we can get to some more obscure statistics or things that would be helpful, but even if we just had kind of a common set of simple statistics that we were helping the maintainers to look at and understand their trends over time, I think that would be helpful. I know not all the projects are tracking the same numbers, and it's not about, you know, trying to get people to focus on the numbers, obviously, because you know, numbers can cause some anti-patterns inside of our communities, but at least getting folks to realize you know, kind of where they are in terms of diversity of contributors or, or growth in, of contributors um, will help us, I think, address some positive behaviors. I, I have a higher level question related to the change of name from working group to task force. I'm not completely sure what is implied by that. Yeah, I was gonna uh, kick off some discussion about that as well. Uh, I think some of the some of the feedback that we got on the original concept of a working group was if we we're going to include non-technical topics, then we're we're kind of stretching what, what the original premise of a working group was for, for some people. And uh, so maybe something that's a little bit different would be appropriate, but I think we don't have any definition about what a task force is versus a working group. Uh, I know that uh, Chris had some thoughts on this. I think uh, it might have been Chris that, that was suggesting the term task force and maybe he's got some uh, specific thoughts on what that structure would be and how that would differ, differ from a working group that would be interesting for us. We'll probably have just a, a few minutes more to talk about this before we should move on to uh, the rest of our agenda. Brian's been putting some stuff in the chat. I don't know if people have seen it. He 
is having problems connecting from China. Okay, so so <clears throat> for what it's worth, I think what you just talked about then makes sense to me. If we want to use a different term just to say, hey, this is not the usual technical working group, and we kind of keep that line moving forward, I think that's reasonable. Yep. No, and that's that's really what I had in mind is I don't I don't have a problem if we, you know, have something where you know we are looking at okay, so what things do we do we want to measure as a function of again I mean I I felt last week that we could do it with just a lab, and then it's just a, a project people are collaborating around. But if we want to have a quick task force or something that is making specific recommendations, I think that's fine too. I just didn't think that a full-blown working group is really the right thing here. Yeah, and just to, to second that, it, you know, it feels like you know, most of our working groups are focused on some form of external deliverable. Um, and this one is really about our own internal health. Um, it, just, mm -hmm. it feels like a different kind of beast um, in some ways. It, it may be that the working group structure is the right way to do it, but it just doesn't feel like the same kind of project. And then we I need a working group to the measure field influence me to is measured. <laughs> yeah, the thing that would make me want to lean towards working group is I think this is an evergreen topic, just like architecture and identity. Um, this is the kind of thing that you know. Well, there's there's probably an associated body of code in the labs, but um, you know, this is something we know needs to keep coming up. Something that that you know, uh, it's it's. It deserves it deserves a space. Whereas I think task force comes across as, hey, here's a specific thing to do, and then we're, it's done, and we wrap things up and go home. Okay. So, uh, in the interest of of time today, why don't we do some more thinking? And if there's something more that we can move forward on the mailing list, let's do that. And then uh, when we speak next week, maybe we can have some some more concrete ideas about the structure of a task force versus a working group or, or get more comfortable with this being part of a working group uh, and still acknowledging some of the legal requirements that would come into play for, or our ignorance maybe of legal requirements that would come into play for um, diversity metrics. So with that, I think our next topic is the uh, quilt update. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you, Adrian, thanks. Hey, so um, not a lot to report this quarter, steady but slow progress. Um, uh, one of the core maintainers who was very quiet last quarter has Started of picking up um, again this quarter. We, we had a good few calls where we did a lot of issue triage and clearing out of old stuff. Uh, we've, we've covered a lot of technical debt, catching up on um, unit tests behind a lot of what's there. And uh, we have one additional contributor, um, a former Ripple employee who now lives in i think he's living in cambodia or something in the jungle somewhere but he um he's he still contributes to a lot of open source and is interested in getting involved so he has started by doing um quite a few code reviews for us uh very detailed reviews which has been very helpful and then recently uh one chain reached out and have expressed an interest in getting involved so um tracy has uh, sent them an invitation to our next community call, which is next week. And that's sort of where we are. Um, one thing worth mentioning, there has been some work on a Go implementation of the ILP stack. Um, that's being done by someone at, at COIL, uh, my current employer. Um, he's been sort of doing it as a side project. I'm hoping to encourage him to incorporate it into the core project so we can uh, you know, continue to see Quilt as the home for uh, various implementations of the different protocols. So uh, once he's comfortable that that's sort of ready for a release, um, I'll, I'll see if I can persuade him to uh, include it into the Quilt project. And that's it. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, I apologize I didn't get a chance to do much research ahead of your uh, update. That's partly my fault. I apologize. The, the report was only finished today. Okay, thanks. Um, my recollection from your last report was that you, know, you were going through some challenges with some of the, the initial planned committers um, dealing with some other priorities. And so what I'm hearing you say now is that it's maybe a little bit of an uptick back in, in the right direction for you over the last quarter. Yeah, that's that's probably a fair assessment. I, I think we're still struggling with resources. Um, you know, I we, we've had a few conversations uh, with various people within the fund, um, uh, Hyperledger, around how we can get other projects involved. Um, it's really just a challenge because uh, that mostly because of my personal and the other core maintainer David's. Um, other commitments, you know, we're, we're very stressed. So uh, it's difficult to um, attend too many of the events uh, and so on. Um, I'm, I'm in Cape Town as well, so travel is, is quite a big issue. And could you remind us uh, the intent of your scope? So, so currently the scope is to um, produce uh, basically implementations of the protocol stack um, for the Interledger protocol. So uh, the reference implementations were all written in JavaScript by the original um, team behind the protocol work. Those have stabilized somewhat and we're looking to produce alternative implementations that are useful in other stacks. So Java and Go, I think are good focus areas because then they potentially can be incorporated into chain code and so on in some of the other Hyperledger projects. Um, but the, the main focus is for someone to be able to write an application that uses the protocol on, on this, whatever stack they're using. Um, and, and in so doing, we can start to demonstrate the protocol's use over a variety of ledgers. So Adrian, this is um, all Adrian, I just had a click through onto your interledger slash go ILP. I get a 404. Um, Hmm. I was looking at it earlier. Maybe he's moved it. Yeah, that's that's no problem. But I'd be interested if if you want to dump a link in a uh, um, TSC. No, I, chat. I still see it. Maybe I pasted the link incorrectly. Sorry. Let me. I'll post it in here. This. If I go here now, I'm definitely seeing that. Yeah, get a four or four, two, but. Oh, maybe, uh, I think he may have it. It's, it's still private, I apologize. I will, yeah. I'll chat to DJ and see if we can make that public. So could you tell us where you are with the standard uh, effort or standardization of the protocol? Uh, so there's been a lot of work on cleaning up the, uh, what we call the RFCs and the documentation. If you go to uh, the interledger, so that same URL slash RFCs, you'll see that a lot of the old stuff that was prototyped and worked on over the last few years has been removed. So the list there is significantly shorter of documents. Uh, there's a bunch of new ones that have been captured. So uh, some things like the configuration protocol, um, had been prototyped but never documented, so those have been captured. And I think in general, most of these specifications are stabilizing. So, um, you know, we're that they're being used as the basis for alternative implementation. Uh, if you're talking about standardization within standardization bodies, yes. um, yeah, yeah, we haven't we haven't really pursued that any further. Um, as I, I think, as I said last time, it's, it's difficult to identify the right forum um, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, so, I know, and I remember the story, and I, I feel for you because I yeah. know tried different venues and not really found one that was welcoming enough or supporting enough. Well, it's, it's That's kind of because asking. we're in a weird crossover space, right, yeah. between payments yeah. and, and, and what feels like should be IETF or tech. Um, but it also has, you know, a whole payment aspect. So, so our approach as it stands is we've, we've 
documented what we believe the standard should be. The documents are all open. So from that perspective, you know, a lot of the recent specification work has actually been done by community members. Um, there's a, a guy from the Interledger user group in Japan who's done significant contributions to the documentation over the last few months. Um, and if there's a standards body who wants to pick this up and, and we think it's the right place to do it, you know, it's, it's very much a community driven thing. Anybody who wants to put resources behind it and make it happen um, will probably be able to steer the ship in a, a particular direction. All right, thanks. Okay, uh, thanks, Adrian. I think uh, it cool. sounds like, oh, was there another? No, that's it. Thanks. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, so next week we will uh, hear from Caliper. Um, and then uh, next up today is the uh, Performance and Scale Working Group. And I think Mark is uh, ready to discuss that. Yes, uh, good day everyone. I had sent the link out on Monday, so hopefully people have had a chance to review it, so I won't go too in depth. Um, essentially, we have sent our metrics document off to the Hyperledger design team. Um, Gordon, who worked with us as a technical writer, has done a great job and given us some good suggestions. Uh, and he's managing the process from here out. So hopefully we can announce this in Montreal. Um, I don't know if there's plans for that or, or any of that. Um, I guess Brian or Tracy, you know, do I work with someone on that or how does that happen? Yeah, so Mark, um, I, I know you've been working with Meredith and uh, Gordon on the, you know, white paper to, to get that done. I think what we're looking for is a yay or nay from the, the TSC as to whether or not uh, we think it's in good shape, you know, the same way we've gotten approvals for like the, the white paper, um, working groups white paper. Uh, and then once that's done, we can uh, let Meredith know and she can uh, work with our creative services team to actually get it into some sort of uh, Hyperledger branded white papers that we can actually release on the on the web and wherever else we want to release it okay thank you yep. um so the main issues we've had is basically uh related around geographic diversity um the folks that were in apac that had joined earlier tended to drop off um once we got the caliper project up and running um, and I realize, you know, the time zone is, the time is bad for them. It's like 1030 at night when they have to join our calls. I had sent an email out to the performance and scale working list, you know, asking if there were better times or anything, um, or, you know, trying to find a solution to help pull more people in. Um, and there was one person from Australia that responded that said that it was a barrier to entry for him, but that he had moved on and wasn't interested in the performance and scale group anymore. So we never actually moved the meeting or anything. Um, but in general, you know, I think this is part of the, the bigger discussion for the community working group um, or whatever we're gonna call it. Um, so once the metrics document is going out, um, this is you know version one, it is designed to you know, we could probably keep working on it for another year if we really wanted to, to get more in depth and more, more examples. But the goal was to get this out. Um, given the wide variety of implementations, some of the descriptions are not as in depth as they could because while they may be great for fabric, they wouldn't be valid for sawtooth or, or similar type of things. So some of the definitions may seem watered down, but they're, but they work across everything we could think of. And that was the goal. After this, we're gonna start with use cases or workloads basically um, to get more in depth. 
um, will probably be a separate document. We'll determine that as we see how the work goes versus a new version of the other document. Um, and this is an area where we could, you know, more people could join who have more expertise in specific use cases versus overall architecture of, you know, one of the one of the frameworks or something. But, you know, what's more important for IoT or low latency or things like that and uh, get into what the key measurements we think would be for each of those different type of workloads um, and maybe variables you could play with, things like that. So questions? Hey, Mark, it's Mick. Um, hey. I got to, um, so I, I deeply understand the um, difficulties in coming up with a consistent set of metrics across the platforms that way. Um, and just first wanted to commend the group for all the work that it's done over the last, what, year, year and a half? Um, yeah, it's been started. <laughs> it's been fantastic. So Thank you. Um, so one question that I would have um, on that is, and again, this goes back to some of our, our notions about umbrellas and multiple platforms and things. Um, as you've gone through these metrics, um, uh, and, and trying to sort of force fit them together. Um, would it be more natural to identify sort of taxonomies of platforms and sets of metrics that go along with those platforms? That is, has your discussion uncovered sort of some differences that we should be talking about as uniquenesses of the platforms? Uh, yeah, I believe it has. Um, and, you know, I'd invite any other PSWG members to hop in and answer here as well. And maybe that's something we should look at doing. Um, or get, you know, and maybe we can pull that out when we get into the workloads. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Well, what that was something, sorry. No, please, Silas, you first. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to, to very much plus one uh, on the on the word taxonomy is exactly what I was thinking there, Nick. I think that um, I think the document has got some pretty interesting divisions there, but it, I think maybe if we could see front and center a little bit more, the be a bit more specific about the trade offs that are made in terms of the systems model. Um, uh, so, for example, like terms like network threshold that is used in this basically to mean a proportion of uh, of nodes in an eventually consistent setting, whereas I was thinking that that was a uh, kind of saturation load and how that I think there is something around the uh, the, the dimensions of like finale uh, full asynchrony uh, lottery mechanisms which you do mention um, I think it's kind of coming out but I wonder if that could be it, I, I'd like to see that further definitions where it's like so that we are comparing apples with apples because I think there are quite different system models that for example the consensus algorithms work under yeah, uh, it's funny that you lit on that because what I was about to comment on was that what became a, a running joke within the working group was trying to define uh, define commitment and finality, and that occupied a great number of discussions and, and frankly, fairly circular discussions. What we one of the last things that we did was we we got some diagrams that we based mostly on the, the PBFT diagram out of uh, the Castro work. Um, in, those are in the appendix. And I think what that brought to letter that, that discussion is that it's, it's very difficult to look across all the options and have some, some common verbiage around what that means. Uh, and so what this represents right now is the closest that, or the, the best rather, that the, the working group could come up with that would work across those definitions. I get, and, and Dan, I guess my question would be is, you know, it, do you feel like it's a natural, and okay, this is a loaded question because I'm very aware of the kind of discussions you've been having on this. Um, uh, are the metrics natural for these platforms or does it make sense to sort of step back and say, wow, what we've really discovered is that there are two different families of things here and that maybe we should be focusing on um, 
maybe the metrics provide us with a way of differentiating between the value statements for the different platforms. That is in a way what you're doing with the metrics is proxying for value for a particular performance. Well, I think one of the open questions that, that we were looking to hit in the next round of paper is the impact of faults in a workload, having a sort of fault mode that can be measured. And that's going to come to bear pretty directly on what, what I think you're, you're alluding to with, with the, the dichotomy of, of consensus mechanisms out there between voting and lottery based. Well, and by the way, my intention was not just to focus on consensus. Then that's, that's an obvious one that has some implications on finality. Um, but sort of the balance between um, compute for transactions and decentralization for um, uh, re attack resiliency, for example, are they have very different implications for system architect but also for the metrics and you know a, a particular platform may be trying to optimize for a particular set and, and just wanted to make sure that the ability to capture those sort of unique um, uh, it, it capture both the comparative metrics and the unique metrics so anyway I, I, it, it just it, it, it that just struck me when I was reading the metrics document was just that that there's there is both an interesting problem of bringing things together into a single representation, but also a, an interesting opportunity for um, characterizing distinctiveness. So. Yeah, um, and I hope we got some degree of that. One of the things that that you should see there is that uh, some of the metrics should be conveyed in the context of the size of the network where we define the size of the network to be kind of the, the limiting effect on availability. So if you were to stand up uh, like a, a one node network, uh, that should be conveyed in those results because that's probably a not very, you know, tolerant, fault tolerant network. Right, okay. Um, so a second question. Um, Mark, that, that you brought up was this connection and with with Caliper and the impact that um, Caliper's had on the project. Can you talk a little bit more about what is the relationship, given how important Caliper is for actually doing sort of an implementation of these things? Can you talk a little bit more about the relationship between the working group and Caliper? Um, right now, I don't know that there is an official relationship at all. Um, Caliper, you know, we sort of stewarded it towards getting released as a project. Um, we wanted to make sure we had the definitions down fairly well before they went off and implemented something. Um, but I, I, I think Vipin may have played with Caliper a little bit, but I don't know if anyone else on the team has. I don't know. I haven't heard anyone on the call speak up and say they have attended the Caliper calls or anything. So okay. right so now, that's something I need to, I'll need to make sure I get involved with okay thanks there is uh, so, no formal relationship but uh, we do have uh, the data from uh, you know not just the data but the methods that they use informing some of our discussions uh, that's for sure and of course they were uh, part of the um, they were uh, definitely ushered into hyperledger through uh, through this working group uh, but, you know, I, I think Mark is uh, saying that uh, the timing may be the problem with those people attending the call, but, uh, you know, it may not be uh, that that they would attend the call. Uh, and in, in response to Mick's uh, first question, uh, there are two things here. One is when you're deciding on using a particular platform, having come co uh, coming into it uh, from the outside as a user, uh, you need uh, some framework in order to even compare the different uh, uh, DLTs. So in that sense, we uh, went ahead and uh, tried to tease out the uh, common metrics that we could use. But 
uh, of course, we ran into all of those problems, uh, which is, uh, you know, the finality versus, uh, uh, you know, all, all, the, all the problems related to the differences uh, in the value propositions, like you say. But I think uh, the second um, paper that will come out of this would uh, uh, weave all that together in some way because we are going to uh, focus on uh, use case uh, scenarios, in which case uh, the differences in these platforms uh, and uh, the target use case would become a lot more focused. And I believe uh, that is, you know, so in the first case to develop these metrics, you know, as objective, quote unquote, objective metrics that lays across every uh, uh, DLT. And the second would be uh, to bring out the differences uh, in terms of the target use cases. Thanks, Pippin. So one of the things I recall hearing on a TSC call within the last six months maybe was, I think it was Brian saying he didn't necessarily want something that was out in, like the initial thought I had was at some point we get to where here's the characteristics, here's a selection guide you could use for your, you know, for what you're trying to solve with a blockchain. But I thought I heard Brian saying he didn't really want something that compares the different Hyperledger projects to each other. And it may have been in a different context, but, and so I, you know, I, I'm all for having something as a selection guide, but I don't know how other people feel. I, you know, it was more that a naive comparison that said, you know, one project is always faster or tends to be faster without, you know, really characterizing what that is or quantifying it. Um, uh, what I thought <clears throat> intend to engender tension between the projects, but uh, where projects have invested in performance tuning and or have some novel characteristics, I think it's worth being objective about it. Um, it was just, it's, you know, people on the outside always want simple reasons to pick one over the other. And I kind of don't want to give them <laughs> speed as one of those simple reasons, unless, unless generally there's one built for speed that, that is defensible by, by metrics, you know. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Any other questions? Uh, how do the TSC members feel uh, as far as going to uh, a vote today to adopt this draft? People feel like they've uh, they've had their opportunity to review and, and get feedback. I'm all for it. Yeah, on my side, I feel like um, the paper reflects a lot of the things we've talked about in the architecture group. Pretty happy. <clears throat> yeah, I've been through it a couple of times. I'm I'm good with it. Yeah, it seems fine. Yep, looks good to me. Okay, great. Tracy, should we do a vote? Sure. So, all those in favor, uh, say aye. Aye. So, Mike, aye. 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 Sorry. Wait, aye. Aye. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Silas. Um, uh, by accepting it as a draft, does that mean that there can still be amendments or additions made, particularly in terms of definitions? Yeah, uh, so absolutely. Our intent is that we would, uh, as a working group, uh, this would be like a 1-0 draft of this document, and then we would push out uh, amendments after we've gotten some community response. So there could be a, like a 1.1 .1 of this document where we make uh, later amendments. Might be worth just adding a a caveat or a, you know a blurb to that effect I, you know this is actually you know Silas you, you do bring up a good point that um, you know we are looking for feedback um, and there may be some modifications as we go forward um, with something like this you know people are going to be looking at it you know almost like you know with um, you know the same way that they look at um, some of the other you know, performance and benchmarking organizations like SPEC and so forth. And we're not there yet, right? And um, so it might might be worthwhile saying we, we welcome feedback, something like that in the intro. <clears throat> yeah, I thought that we had verbiage in there. Um, 
I, I don't remember. Um, so if that's the case, that's fine. Okay, so with that in uh, mind. What, uh, so yeah, so Tracy, there, there, there are still some comment. I, I just look at the doc here. There's still some comments um, on the document itself. Um, are we going to resolve that those first before we have a vote here? So I, I think what what we had decided at the working group was that um, we were going to do more or less a, a feature freeze, like what we would do for a code drop, and know that there's some maybe some suboptimal things, like in particular that uh, a thing that you've commented on with the difference between reads and queries. Yeah, that could be cleaned up, and we probably want to clean that up in in one dot one because they're more or less. Uh, synonymous or interrelated there, but that there's not a, a substantive defect there that should delay this version. Uh, yeah, I mean, specifically to my comments, uh, but I see there's a bunch of other questions, some from Tracy, some from someone else. Uh, if uh, no answer to the these questions fine to the person who asked the question, then that, that's fine with me. I'm just asking the question in general. Yeah, I think just the, the aspect of it being an open document is that, uh, you know, we, we resolve things continuously. And so we're at a point now where um, okay. further resolutions would be a subsequent draft. Okay, I'm ready to vote. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, I guess we'll be clear then. So all those in favor of this being a 1.0 release of the paper with future um, changes to come. I would also add, and the caveat that that uh, um, uh, comment about the wanting feedback uh, be, in, put, be put into this before it becomes 1.0. Um, all those in favor of those caveats, uh, say aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Anybody opposed, say no. Aye. Maybe <laughs> nay? <laughs> yeah, nay. Nay. <laughs> uh, of opposing it, say aye. <laughs> It sounds like we passed anonymously anyway, so uh, I think that's good to go. We'll, we'll call this a 1.0. Um, Mark, are, do you want to check and make sure that uh, comment is in place and then we'll, we can get back to Meredith and Allison? Yes, I will make sure that that gets put in there. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. And thanks to the team for all the hard work. Yeah, thanks to the, the rest of the Absolutely. working group. It was uh, over a year of effort there. Um, I know that, uh, nice job. Nice job. Uh, uncomfortable times for them to join that call at a lot of times. We can take this weekend off. <laughs> okay, so we are down to about uh, three minutes or less here. Uh, I don't think we can have a good discussion about the last two agenda topics. So what I would ask is that uh, people review the social impact working group and also think about more broadly what we want to be doing with the working groups. Uh, some of what has come to light in the discussion about the community health working group is, is whether and how we want to uh, address non-technical working groups. Um, and think about what the implications of that are for the, the resourcing support that we get from the Linux Foundation as well as the time that we spent the time that we spend on the mail list and in this call in discussing those topics. Uh, and then while we won't have time to discuss it right now, I wonder, Dave, if, if you want to just tee up some of what people should be thinking about over this week for the bug bounty discussion. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dan. Um, so the discussion, I, I posted to the mailing list um, a report on our past year of our bug bounty, uh, how it went and the 
successes that we had and some of the problems we had. The, I, I was just going to field questions related to the report in the mailing list, but then I wanted to have also the discussion about our future direction. Um, there's significant money to be spent here or to not be spent here. And um, I made my recommendations in the mailing list. We can go into more of that when we have more time, but thinking forward, um, do we want to continue to spend, you know, thousands of dollars with um, hacker one, to provide us with uh, like triage and management services, knowing that we do have an all volunteer security team that is more than capable of doing all of that. So uh, we can still use the hacker one platform without paying them money. So that's really nice. And they will still process payments for us and handle the money for us without us paying the money. Um, it's just whether we want to have hyper, hi, hacker one staff helping out with like triage and, and management of, of reports. Yeah. But I mean, so, but how much have they actually helped? I mean, most of the things that have come through are, hey, you know, I can, you know, I can hack your website. Yeah. <laughs> Which we explicitly, repeatedly said, this is not in scope. Yes. And uh, as far as I can tell, we had zero help from them to squash that bullshit. And um, yes, I mean, maybe and, I'm well, wrong, I mean, but basically they all came through and, and none of them were addressed and made, you know, initially by staff. So those are all excellent things to think about over the coming yeah. week. Feel free to chime oh, in yeah. on the mail thread. We are <laughs> at the top of the hour. So I'll Thanks, thank Dan. everybody for robust discussions today and look forward to hearing from everybody next week. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Ciao.